Big Burkhead here, along with Carlos Menares, Detroit Free Press, out in Allen Park. Carlos, where it's been a busy week for the Lions. Uh, game on Sunday, and we'll get to our predictions in a second against the New York Giants. But uh, Tuesday, big news. Kerryon Johnson goes on injury reserve. Quandre Diggs gets traded to the, the uh, Seattle Seahawks. How do you think these moves affect the Lions, will impact the Lions this week? Um, definitely the carry on thing, I think will. That's the bigger one, right? That's I mean, the bigger yeah. one. Um, Quandre hadn't been playing great, um, but I do think there's something to be said for his uh, veteran experience back there, at least. I mean, maybe he wasn't, you know, making big plays and closing on the ball and all this other stuff, but he knew where, what he was doing. So, uh, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a gap there, I think, to make up from Will Harris or whoever steps into that role. Um, but carry on, you know, I mean. You know, it's a shame. I mean, you know, he's a young guy, second-year player, missed time last year with a left knee injury, then it's the right knee this year. Uh, Never good for a young running back to have to go through that kind of stuff. Knee injuries are serious things. He requires surgery. Um, He's going to miss at least eight games. Um, And I I think he was, you know, I think he was doing the right thing. I think they were doing a nice job trying to stick with the run game. He's he's a between-the-tackle runner. They don't really have a plug-and-play replacement for him. I think they're going to try to do it kind of by committee. Maybe Ty Johnson gets a few more looks um, initially than anybody else, but it's going to be tough. Without a run game, I don't care who you are. It's, it's just tough yeah. sliding. I mean, look, the the uh, Diggs trade certainly could have a bigger impact on the locker room because, you know, we'll see how players respond to it, right? Like, you, you trade a captain, you trade a starter. Um, you know, it's never a sure thing that it's going to go how you want. I mean, I think there you know, there are football reasons, and, and obviously we know Matt Patricia is still in the the – you know, business of molding his locker room how he wants it, and that's not to say Quandre was a bad player or anything like that, a bad person. No one should say that. He, he certainly was the opposite of that. I mean, everybody, you know, in the, the defensive back room loved him, but you know that doesn't necessarily mean you're a Matt Patricia type guy, I guess. And so I think there were some of those you know factors that play with the move. Um, you know, so we'll we'll see what impact that has on the locker room. But from a pure you know playing standpoint, X's and O standpoint, what goes on the field on Sunday, that's about carry on. I mean. What do they do to make up for the the loss of the running game? You know, can Ty Johnson is he going to, you know, get 15 carries or JD McKissick or how are they going to split up? And, and more importantly, maybe how are the Giants going to play the Lions? I mean, now you know without that threat of the running game, we've seen a lot of uh, you know heavy boxes, overloaded boxes to to try to stop that run. And that's not all about carry on, but that you know that's a, the way a lot of teams, at least before the Vikings, had sort of defended the Lions, and now. Uh, you know, maybe it, you know these defenses throw a little more attention Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay, Danny Amendola's way, and, and so maybe that takes away some of what Matthew Stafford can do. Yeah, you know, you you, you remove one chess piece, you got to replace it with another. Um, I would think their tight ends get a little bit more involved. Maybe T.J. Hawkinson, maybe Jesse James, maybe you know um, they're going to have to do something. And I, the one thing is, I think Daryl Bevel has been fairly creative. You know, it hasn't been. Uh, it's been a little more creative than it was under Cooter, yep. so um, that's their one thing they have. And the other thing they have going for them, the Giants are not very good across the board. It's so. a big thing this week, especially on defense. I mean, offensively yeah. they have some talent, but defensively, not to, they're not going to confuse anyone for the '85 Bears. <laughs> yeah, so they they have a chance. They can run. They can probably you know get some semblance of a run game going that brings in the play action pass. You know, uh, they're definitely going to probably you know pay extra attention to Marvin Jones after the big game. Um, but the Lions have enough weapons, I think, still, yep. um, where they can get something. They can move the ball. They can score. Matt Prater can kick a field goal here and there. I think. I think it'll be enough. Look, uh, from a record standpoint, the Giants are two five and one, I believe, or two two and five. Two I'm sorry, five. two and five. The Lions are two three and one. So records aren't completely different, but I, I do think the Lions are a much better team. I mean, to me, there's, you know, there's only a couple things, I guess, outside of injury. You know, dramatic injury that could could impact this or, or could could lead the Lions to win, and one is if the locker room was too fragile after the, the Quandre trade, and you know, from what we know so far, I, I don't you know expect that to be the case, but you never know how people are going to respond. Well, can I can to, I jump in for a second on that? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Just what we're, you know, yesterday was our first day yep. in the locker room. What was your sense from the players who were in there? There wasn't a ton of people in there, no. but the players who were in there, what did you sense? I sense that they were towing the company line with what they wanted to say. You ask them about what, you know, how are you better today than you were yesterday if you trade a starter away? Oh, that's not for me to say. That's for Bob Quinn or Matt Patricia. That's a question for them. Okay, well, how did the Golden Tate trade impact the locker room last year? Oh, I don't want to talk about last year. I mean, they, they just they didn't yeah. want to get into the, 
you know, the, the potential negativity of the deal. I, and, you know, so they're towing the line with yeah. Matt, what Matt Patricia asked them to say, basically. I think, uh, I think it became a third rail topic. But I think that initially the shock of it, you know, it's always, it, it's, there's the emotional factor. Darius Slay spoke up on yep. Twitter. Um, there were, you know, uh, Quandre Diggs and Evan Loss and other people from their little, you know, giffy comments and memes and things. You could kind of surmise what their belief was. But, um, you know, it's not like it's something new. We know yeah. that Patricia's been trying to change the locker room to his liking, um, and this is part of that. Right. You know, I think after a day or two, people, you wrote a column saying it's business. This is business ultimately in the NFL. It was a great column. It right. was it was really good. Rare, rarely, rare good insight <laughs> on your part, David. And it was it's true. The, the initial shock of it, the emotion of it, gets to you, and maybe some of the closer players like Gary Slayer are the ones you have yeah. to watch. You know. But Slay's probably not going to play this week, though. I mean, didn't practice uh, Wednesday, Thursday. It just you would imagine they're going to take it easy with the yeah. hamstring. We'll see. But you know, early yeah. signs would point to him not being on the field. And you know, and and just going forward, you know, if this is going to be, uh, I don't think this is going to be some kind of poison pill or some kind of thing that creates you know division in the in the locker room. I think people just yep. understand it, you know, and and they probably understand, you know, let's say Quandre Diggs and, and Matt Patricia didn't necessarily agree on everything. Um, the players would know that. The locker room knows that. They they chat about these things quite often. They're humans. It's just, it's a workplace environment. Yeah, they would understand that. Like anything, you're shocked in the moment, but you know what? You got to get back to work. You know, somebody gets right. laid off at your place of employment. It's the same thing, right? You're like, right. oh man, maybe you start looking at worrying about things about yourself or whatever. But next day when you go to work, you got to do your job to to make sure you keep it. And I think that's you know sort of the the same thing yeah. here. And I mentioned it. No Darius Slay probably this week. Uh, we'll see. The other of my points on how sorry, the I'm Giants so sorry. could win this game beyond <laughs> the locker room dynamic is turnovers. Like if by some fat chance Matthew Stafford throws three picks or something like that, which he's not going to do. But, you know, if that happens. Daniel Jones needs to protect the ball. He's got 12 turnovers this year. That's the Giants' rookie starting quarterback. And then Saquon Barkley. It, it, the Giants, it, one other thing on the turnovers, the, the Giants are one of the worst in the league at, at, at you know turnover ratio. The Lions are one of the best. So, Again, just signs, you know, point to that staying that way. If that flips, you know, maybe maybe that plays havoc on, on predictions. But Saquon Barkley being the real factor, we've seen how bad the Lions' run defense is this year, uh, giving up about 140 yards on the ground per game. Saquon is one of the you know two or three best running backs in the NFL. He can do it all, um, you know. So I, obviously that's got to be the focal point of the Lions' defense, stopping Saquon Barkley. Yeah, they have to. I mean, that's, you, you, if you stop Saquon, it's, there's almost no chance Daniel Jones is going to beat you. Um, and, you know, give credit to the Vikings last week. I mean, Dalvin Cook had a great game. Um, they had enough weapons. Kirk Cousins played a good enough game, you know, got the ball where he needed to. A lot of it was Dalvin Cook. Um, but they had their defense to hang their head on. The Giants aren't good on defense or offense, really. Saquon's right. their one thing that they— Golden Tate. And Golden Tate. Yeah, well, they, they, they've got a couple guys, but you're right. Yeah. I mean, he, Saquon's the engine, no doubt. He he's makes the, the engine. Go. He's the engine. And, 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 and you know what, though? Golden could be the X factor. He could be could be the revenge game. It could be, could be uh, what, you know, diving into the end zone, backing into you the end zone. You know he's got some He's got something. He's, he's, yeah. he's, they, they've got to get him the ball. I want to see him score just to see what he does in the Well, as Tavon Wilson said the other day, he said, you know, <laughs> it's our job not to let him. <laughs> I forget the word that he used, but, you know, do one of his – you know, his, his <laughs> pre-planned celebrations because he's always going backwards or doing something or, you know, so Golden obviously loves to have fun when he's playing. So I think he'll get cheered, by the way. I, I think oh, he yes. cheer him. I mean, he yes. got traded. It's not like he went out on yeah. on bad terms. You know, he was traded away. So I think I think Lions fans yeah. give him a cheer when he comes back. You still see the 15 Tate 3 yep. jerseys out there. So, yeah, for yep. sure. And he deserves it. He he really was a fun player to watch and cover. Yeah, all right. So let's, uh, let's, let's get to predictions now. Again, I, I just... To me, this is a game that there there's really no excuse for the Lions to lose. I mean, if they do, there are some serious questions, I think, going forward about, you know, this team, this staff, everything. Um, but, you know, I'll let you go first, ladies first. But, uh, no, I, I uh, look, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't, I don't see much way that the Lions lose this game. This no. is a game they have to win. And it, like you said, the Vikings are, they don't, you know, the Vikings had a defense. The Giants don't have a defense. Uh, the Vikings had, you say what you will about Kirk Cousins, he played really well, a veteran quarterback. Veteran this quarterback. is Daniel Jones, a rookie quarterback, and going against some of Matt Patricia's schemes, the way the Lions can dis disguise some of their coverages, I would expect it's going to be a long day for Daniel, Daniel Jones. If it's not, I mean, if he has a big game, you know, all bets are off. But I just, to me, I think this is a, a game where the Lions put up a lot of points and they hold the Giants to not many. I'm thinking, like, 
thirty-four seventeen range, something somewhere in there. Wow, that a blowout. Calling they're, it. They're gonna double them, huh? Calling it. Double them. Up. Okay. You know what? This is really weird. I have twenty-four seventeen for Lions. I have not quite as crazy of a number, but it could it could get to that point. High twenties, low thirties. Yep. Um, if they start pouring it on. Um, uh, Lions do struggle a little bit with rookie quarterbacks from New York. Is that too soon to say I, that? Is it is well, it? not just from New York. Sam Darnold, Kyler Murray this year. I mean, you know, no. Josh Allen, New York. They did beat him Buffalo last year. But you know, Sam Darnold <laughs> early in the season. And Patricia said yesterday, he said there's something you know when you don't have a lot of tape. I mean, Daniel Jones has played six games now, so it's not like yeah. you have nothing on him. But you're right, Carlos. <laughs> that be another another thing. If the, this is this is actually a really Worrisome game, right? Because if they lose this game, sure, yeah. it's over. It is just over, right? There's no coming back, come from back from this. It would be tough to come. I mean, look, the Lions right now, right, two, three, and one. They probably need to win eight of their last ten games to make the playoffs, right? And if you fall to two, four, and one, and you lose at home Seven. to the Giants, you're probably not. No, I don't think nine, 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 nine six, and half, one. That nine doesn't get you in. No, I don't think so. Not in the NFC. Huh? But All regardless right. of what it is, at the end of the day, you have to win a lot. If you lose to the Giants at home, um, there's a lot of people bailing fan-wise, a lot of people jumping ship, and just given the week that you had, but yeah. again, what we talked about at the top, putting Carrion on IR, trading Quandre Diggs, I think that's when people start to look around and kind of wonder you know, what's going on and, and what happened. So I, I do, I think this is a very critical game from that standpoint. And you know if they lose, it's going to be all, the, the, the storyline, everything, last year it was Sam Darnold, this year it's Chase Daniel, and you know, but the thing is, okay, so this game does it determine Daniel the trade? Jones, Daniel Jones, I'm sorry. Um, do you does I'm this? Ahead to Bears week, <laughs> does does this uh, game determine whether they're buyers or sellers? Do they lose? Are they sellers? Well, yeah, if well, they if, win, are they buyers? If you lose, you're 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 not going to be buying. Are you sellers? Um, but well, yeah. I mean, well, see, I don't know. I mean, look, uh, if you lose, I think there's bigger questions about everything you know that's going on. So, uh, but. I think that would be in the best interest of the organization to become sellers. But I, I don't think that's, again, going to be the case. I, I, In fact, you know, again, after the Quandary trade, they're buyers right now. That's part of the reason why they went out and made that deal. Yeah. They wanted that extra fifth-round pick to have the capital to move around and add something to this team within the next you know few days. So yeah. trade deadline's next week, and we'll see if they're able to do that. But I, I think they're buyers right now. And yeah, if they if they lose, all bets are off. But that's not happening. Thirty four seventeen. Put it down. Mark it down. Take it to Vegas. I'm I'm more Don't reasonable. Twenty four seven. Twenty four fourteen. Twenty four fourteen. Okay. You haven't uh, doubled up at thirty four seventeen. Thirty four seventeen. Okay, those so, are easy to remember. Yeah. So we'll see. All right, uh, that'll do it from us out here in Allen Park. Uh, like we said, big game this week against the New York Giants. And look, there's a. Lions could get on a little bit of a roll here. They got uh, you know some some winnable, very winnable games coming up. I think there's only three games with teams. Uh, that have currently have winning records left on their schedule. So we'll see what uh, what that means for the Lions going forward, starting Sunday at Ford Field. For Carlos Menares, I'm Dave Burkett, Freep.com.